Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and it's going to be a brief little review for Sword Art Online, episode 17. Lots of stuff going on in this episode. I was on the edge of my seat and basically cringing through the last quarter of it, and it's all to do with the return of the character of Sugo. This guy is, let me just say from right off the bat, dripping evil and menace, and I'm sure most people want to just choke this guy whenever he's on screen. And I can only imagine for people who have read the light novels, which I haven't, that this character must be as evil and menacing, if not more so, than he appears to be in the anime because I've heard nothing but negative things said about him. But essentially this episode begins right where we left off with Kurito having quickly dispatched the three attackers of Lifa and her ward. And he basically gives the option to the last guy, you know, you want to take me on? And this guy's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm out. And uh, so Kurito, of course, lives up to that badass sense that we've seen before with him. And I just think it's hilarious when he explains to Lifa, you know, you could thank me. I mean, I basically just saved the princess in distress, that kind of thing. The incredulous reaction she has, it totally reminded me of Voss, and I have to say, but essentially, you know, we're still wondering who is Leafa. Is this going to be Asuna was one of my speculations. Is it going to be, as I've heard, you know, his cousin Sugu in the real world? And uh, we have a definitive answer in this episode, finally. But before I get to that, of course, I really loved that whole sequence where after she stumbles on the fact that he has Yui in tow, and she believes this to be his own personal pixie in the game, that whole segment of her teaching him how to manipulate the wings with the bone in his back, and that whole sequence of her challenging him to fly faster, and of course, he's picking up on a very natural because he's been in this situation before, he's played these games before, we know that he's a bit of a techie, so it comes naturally to him. And I loved that whole situation. Of course, she wants to pay him back, buy him a drink in the game as a thank you, essentially. And there's this quaint little moment that's very reminiscent to when, you know, basically he came to Asuna's aid once before in this little sort of inn, tavern, whatever it is. And that's where, you know, basically we have this sort of hint that maybe Leafa is picking up on who Kurito is. She doesn't seem to recognize the name when he introduces himself as Kurito. And, of course, there's no reason for him to suspect this is his cousin with a name like Leafa. But there's that moment where he talks about looking for someone in that tree that's like the center of this game and looking for information on it. And there's just this moment of realization in Leafa's eyes that, to me, she must have realized who this was. If she hasn't, I would think she's incredibly stupid because who else is she going to run into in a game talking about somebody, looking for them, being lost without them, that kind of thing. And so I'm really wondering if she put two and two together that this is her cousin in the real world because, you know, you have that quick turnaround. First, she's warning him to stay away from this tree and the, the monsters that he'll encounter and that kind of thing. But when she sees that he's determined, suddenly she does a 180 degree turn and says, let me take you there. I'll help you get there. And why would she do that unless she had an invested sort of interest in doing so for her cousin, helping her cousin? And, you know, this is pretty much speculation, though, because once we see the reveal that, yes, this is Sugu, you know, she takes her helmet off in the real world and she becomes beat red with embarrassment and she says you know he was a weird guy or something like that and the way it's phrased you know on the one hand it's like is she saying her cousin is weird in the game she didn't expect him to be like that or is she just referring to him as some random guy she met you know she doesn't know it could go either way at this point but i think she suspects it i would be surprised if she didn't as i say it would make her look so stupid if she didn't and you know following up on that though of course we finally have some concrete follow-up with asana herself we see that she is being contained in this giant bird cage and as i mentioned her benefactor is sugo himself as the sort of monarch of this giant tree of this entire game and he has very expertly supplanted himself in this game taking control of 300 people, which we find out what that's all about. He basically looks at, you know, Kayaba, who created this original game, SAO, and trapped people in there for life and death purposes, like he was infantile, like he didn't know what he was doing with the power he wielded. So now this guy, Sugo, is so much worse because he's talking about manipulating the minds of people, and not only that, selling it to a big corporation in America. And on the side is to keep 
asana contained in there and even makes that threat that he's going to force himself on her if she doesn't comply with him and of course he says he's joking and he backs away but again this guy is dripping just primordial evil and i hate the bastard because basically that's like asana's last hope being broken you know you see her fall to her knees and plead save me carito and it's just misty eyed beyond reproach um so i mean this was just an incredible episode tons and tons of revelations and furthering of the story as far as i'm concerned and i can really only grasp at straws to know just how long this is going to play out how long is it going to take if ever for carito to save her and you know is that going to involve going up against sugo because of course he's got himself in such a clever posture in this game that might not be you know discerned by anyone he has it set up so that multiple races have to team together to get up and climb up into this tree and meet the sort of leader of the game the king of the game whatever it is and you know how is that going to happen when it's so unlikely all of these factions all of these different races don't get along and are warring with each other and i think I suspect part of that is going to be in a union between Leafa and Carito, because I think they are supposed to be different races in the game, unless I'm much mistaken. I, I kind of got that gist from some of the dialogue, and I will leave it to you guys to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but essentially, I think that might be the key to saving Asuna and those 300 people. You know, Carito and Leafa teaming up, and whether they find out who they really are, I don't know. I can only suspect that Leafa knows this is her cousin in the real world, but who knows? It's still early in the game to tell, and I can't wait to see how this chapter unfolds. It has me on the edge of my seat. It has me greatly anticipating some phenomenal things to come, as the series has since its inception. And once again, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. If you're following the series, what you think of it. If you've read the light novels, you know, how closely is this sticking with it? Would you say they've deviated at all, or are they pretty much on par with keeping all of the details in tow for this anime series? And otherwise, that's pretty much all I have to say on it, so I will catch you later. Peace.